Hello everyone and welcome back to uh, yet another video covering the AQA GCSE Computer Science course. We're looking at topic number 16 in today's video, um, looking at application testing. So we've looked at testing uh, quite a while back and um, looking at types of errors and, and ways to test. Um, this is looking at a more a, a broader sc a scale with large projects and this is sort of a, another continuation of um, the topic number 14 of the um, software development life cycle so I'll be mentioning terms that are to do with that video um, so if they're confusing make sure you check that out and it should, it should sh uh, shed some light on what um, I'm talking about so um, let's let's have a look at um, what application testing is so it's using the application that's already been developed in the implementation stage again that's a term to do with the life cycle um, so uh, using the application in control conditions to see how it works Pretty simple. Um, I'm going to know why this testing is important, and more importantly, rigorous testing. This means that everything is being tested in the program, not just bits and pieces. How you feel like it, everything's being tested, and it's essential as it determines whether or not the developers have met the specifications outlined at the start of the lifecycle. Um, it also ensures that the end users um, and the end user users are the people who actually use the software. Um, it it shows that their experience is not affected by any bugs and errors that may be left in the program, which makes the evolution phase of the life cycle easier as less has to be done. This is a phase where um, uh, changes and upgrades are made, and if there's nothing really to upgrade, then it makes the evolution phase a lot easier to go through. Um, although that phase, in theory, is technically um, ongoing, but oh well. Um, so let's have a look at types of testing. So the um, specification for this course is very um, unspecific unfortunately um, which is opposite to the name specification but um, so it it asks you to understand the different types of tests that can be used so I, I take that to mean maybe two or three uh, maybe it just asks you to outline one type of test and you've got to know about it. So I've given you three in this video. First one is functional testing and this is testing in normal conditions um, to ensure that the software is in line with all the specifications outlined by the client. Usually this type of testing will be done first. This is to make sure that everything asked um, of, the, of the developers by the client is met and this means that the software is supplied with data that the client would anticipate would be given to it so the data that pretty much the program has been designed to operate with um, this means that um, quite frankly if you don't pass this test the, the whole software is flawed um, so this is the easiest sort of type of test then you have beta testing by the way there are maybe 10 or 15 different types these are just three most common ones I would say so beta testing and this is testing done by a sample of the end users uh, that aren't connected to the development team, meaning there's no bias involved. And um, they would obviously be inputting data that the client would anticipate because they're the users that the client is um, aiming the software to be made for. Um, so data would be inputted as expected, so within the limits, but because you know mistakes can be made and you know people are inquisitive, they, they always people try and push the boundaries of software. Um, the, this testing is done in more extreme conditions because there's no control over what the end users could input. Um, so this is a slightly harder test for the software to go through, but a very important one. And finally, um, the hardest test is probably stress testing. And this is done in unfavorable extreme conditions where data is entered into the program outside of the specification limits. This can be done by anyone, but usually the development team. So they would just enter data that the program maybe hasn't been designed to deal with. Um, it should have really been designed to um, uh, to be robust. So robustness is, we looked at this again uh, in a previous video, but robustness is how well the program can deal with errors. So if programs should have been built to be robust, but it, it's not designed to be um, accommodating of this, well it is designed to be accommodating, but it's not designed to um, use this data in its algorithms or, or whatever is going on. So this is the hardest test. Um, you know, programs should really pass this test, but um, these two tests are the main ones that they, for, they're, they're testing things that the program will have to deal with on you know a daily basis, whereas this is more an unusual case, but still very important. Um, so now let's have a look at 
what a unit, um, also called modular testing, is. So this is a software testing method where the code is split up into individual sections, which are then tested independently to all of the others. Um, this means that each section of this of the code is isolated, meaning that errors can be found very quickly. So if each section of code is run and an error is found in one of them, um, you know that the error is from within that section. So it means they can be isolated quickly and um, can be removed and fixed uh, with ease. Um, and this is obviously very very thorough because everything is being tested in the code, which is useful for complex projects where there's a lot of scope to go wrong. So um, um, unit usually it's called unit testing, but um, I believe from reading an article that unit testing is more to do it's more done within the implementation phase, whereas modular testing is more done in the testing phase. Um, so this means that unit testing is usually done during the actual coding. So you do bit you you write a section, test it, write a section, test it. Whereas modular is doing it as a whole. Um, so usually you do unit testing anyway, but modular testing is sort of an addition um, but I'm not I'm not 100% sure on that because that's the only seem, seem like the only article on the internet about this so I don't know how valid that is and again the specification doesn't really um, shed much light on that and um, finally it asks you to be able to create your own test plans I assume this is more to do with a control assessment but it may ask you about this in the exam so test plans are documents created before the testing process so before the testing phase of the software development lifecycle and they outline what tests will occur and how they will be conducted using the, the types of testing we looked at before and um, they will sh they show the anticipated uh, results and the methods used and the details outlined should be quantifiable meaning that um, they uh, well I mean quantifiable measurable basically meaning that they are realistic um, and uh, the details outlined will actually um, show up essentially um, in, the, in the tests um, so that's it for today's video it went slightly longer than I had hoped it's a fairly short topic but um, hopefully this was helpful um, and uh, yeah be sure to check out for future videos and past videos. Yeah. Bye.